afternoon, everybody. This is BJ Garrett, Care Executive Director, back with you on this Testimonial Tuesday. And I have my sweet friend, Terry Daly, with me tonight. So Terry, will you just kind of introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about who you are. Hi, everybody. I'm Terry Daly, and I've been married for 40 years. I have five grown children. All of them are married except for one, and that wedding will take place in October. I have six grandchildren, and um, that's mostly what I do is spend time with my family. I love my family, and I love Jesus. <laughs> that's, it. that's important. We love Yes, Jesus. very. So, I, I love, I've got to lead our abortion recovery with you a couple of times, Terry, and I just love you. I feel like sometimes God partners are our facilitators. I mean, you're like the sweet, compassionate one and just full of mercy. And I'm like, okay, let's suck it up. Let's work through this, you know, but I love, I love that counterbalance that we have when we get to lead together. And um, I want to just dive right in and just let's talk. Will you just be willing to share your abortion story with the men and women that are watching tonight and um yeah let's just let's just go there all right let's dive in so i already shared that i've been married for 40 years and um so my abortion story is with uh, my husband that i've been married to for 40 years so let's go back um old so this is way back in 1979 when I was 19 years old, I went to my father's uh, wedding. He, he was getting remarried and I met this really uh, good looking guy. And um, anyway, we started dating long distance and, um, and then we decided to move in together. So we were living together and honestly, I was, I thought everything was fine. I was happy, I was with the love of my life and um, all was well. Well, then I got pregnant um, and I was happy. I loved this man I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. And um, it was just, uh, I was happy. I wanted this baby. And, um, and so we had, so a couple of weeks went by and we had told uh, some people, some of our friends. Um, and then when I went to share this with my mom, uh, she and and my mom was a wonderful wonderful loving mom i don't want this to come across uh in, in any way negative towards her i think it was the time and all the things that were going on with abortion i don't think we were um completely aware of of the truth of abortion i think um and we still are lied to but we were very lied to um then we didn't um see inside the womb and so we were told that it was just a blob of tissue and we believed that lie um, my mom worked with a lady who had just had an abortion and so the lady was fine so i think she thought it would be the best thing for me because she wanted the best for me well she suggested that i get an abortion and it devastated me i that's not something I ever thought about. I knew about abortion. Um, Planned Parenthood was across the street from the high school. I knew several girls that had had an abortion or two or three. Um, but it wasn't something I thought about doing. I, I loved this man. I loved this baby. I wanted to have this baby. But when she suggested that to me, to me, it was saying, uh, I think this is wrong. I don't support you. Um, and, and so it put that thought in my head. Then I went, so I left, I went back and spoke with Kevin, the man that I was living with at the time. Um, and he said, I don't care, whatever you want to do. Well, when someone says, I don't care to you, it, it feels like they're not, they don't want that child. They're not supporting you at all. I think if you want something, you would say, yes, it'll be okay. We, we will support you. Let's, let's have this baby. It's all right. But no one said that to me. Um, the only thing I had heard was, have you thought about an abortion? And I don't care whatever you want to do. So to me, I felt like I didn't have a choice. I felt like there was no support. No one wanted this baby. Um, it was very devastating to me. Anyway, through tears, uh, I made an appointment at Parent, 
a Planned Parenthood and I went and spoke with them and believe it or not, the counselor there told me, she said, I think that you need to wait and think about this. I don't think this is something you want to do. But I told her, no, I have to do this. And that's what I felt like. I felt like I had to do this because no one was going to love this baby or be there for me or anything. So I went ahead and made the appointment. Um, Kevin drove me there. And when I went in, um, the only thing I remember is it was just uh, nothing. I, no feeling of anything, no, no kindness, no meanness either, just a, just an eerie nothingness. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, I was taken back, I remember being taken back to the room. I remember the lady, I don't think she was a nurse, but the lady who was in there uh, told me that I was doing the right thing, that she had had an abortion. She was uh, 40 something years old and she had gotten pregnant and she, her kids were already grown. She didn't want any more children. And she kept patting my arm, telling me I was doing the right thing. Um, I remember the sound, which was horrible. I remember the pain. And then I don't remember the cramping pain. I don't remember anything after that. I remember being brought back out to a room and sitting in a lounge type chair and they give you like juice and cookies and you're there by yourself. Uh, Kevin wasn't allowed back there. You're there very much alone. And I remember being in a lot of pain. I remember when I left, he took me home. I remember that, um, I just wanted to just be left alone. It was very um, depressing. I was in a lot of pain. I just didn't want to talk to anybody. I think he felt bad. He made me um, something to eat. He made me a BLT sandwich. And I remember my mom calling and talking to him to make sure I was okay. But I want you to know that I didn't really eat that sandwich. And I'll bet you it was 20 years before I could ever eat a BLT sandwich again, because that's what came to my mind. So I could never, never even see it on a menu. Um, anyway, after that, I took everything that happened to me and I just put it all inside this little box and wrapped it up really tight and put it somewhere where it could never be thought of again. I, um, I pushed it so far away. I, I literally never thought of it again. Well, we ended up um, getting married six months later and um, a great, uh, a wonderful wedding and uh, go forward a little bit. The first thing I wanted to do was be pregnant. I, now it was okay. Now it, we were married. So my family would support me. Um, my husband would support me and that was all I could think of. I never thought about what I did. I just wanted to be pregnant because now it was all right. Um, and it, it didn't take a long time, but it did take a while. So there were, it was a couple of years. So there were times where I, I would have a little bit of a feeling, oh, I'm never going to be pregnant. This God's going to punish me for what I did. I'm never going to have children. Well, I did get pregnant. So I had um, my first child and then I had another child. And so I just never thought about my abortion again. We just were this happy, loving family and we had a boy and a girl and just uh, involved in the church and life just went on. Um, I know that um, probably a lot of you have had bad dreams or a, a bad dream has woken you up. Um, this was something different. I was asleep one night and I was um, woken up in a panicked, like a, a, a terrible panic feeling that would not go away. And there was no reason for it. Um, uh, anyway, it was so bad. We ended up calling an ambulance. And anyway, the, the ER doctor told me he believed I had had an anxiety attack. Well, I had never heard of an anxiety attack not me. I didn't have those. What, what was this? So I really struggled with some anxiety and depression for a while, but
but I didn't know why. And I never connected it to my abortion ever because it was stuck so far away. I didn't even think about it at all. So I really suffered quite a while with some depression and anxiety. And I just began to dive deep into the word and just beg God to heal me because it was so horrible. It was just relentless. Um, but I never connected it to my abortion. I never knew why I was, I just knew I was um, in a lot of pain and, and going through a lot of suffering. Well, Jesus began to work with me and, and help me heal from that. And a couple of years, it, it went away. A couple of years down the road, we're in a Sunday school class and a lady gives up and get, gets up and gives her testimony about her abortion. And she's going to do a post-abortion um, Bible study. And I felt like the Lord was telling me, you need to do that. And, and she was a great person, uh, such a loving, kind person. She's become a very good friend. Um, anyway, so I went to the Bible study and um, it begins to pull out. It began to untie those strings that I had tied up in with that on that box and uh, slowly open it up and bring things out. And um, it was rough. I, I won't lie, it was rough, but I needed to go through that. I ended up also doing a little bit of counseling with a lady who worked with the pregnancy center and that helped a lot too. And um, for the first time, BJ, I let myself cry. I didn't realize I never even let myself cry or wow. mourn that baby. I, I thought what I had done, I wasn't allowed to cry. I yeah. did that, I chose that. So I was not allowed to cry or mourn that baby. Um, one night I left the lady's house counseling. I don't think I've ever in my life cried so hard. I had to pull over. But anyway, I, Jesus began to tell me, when you, when you feel that um, mourning for that child, you need to let yourself cry. So I did. And I could be even just cooking dinner and it would just hit me out of nowhere. And I learned to stop and just let myself feel that and begin to cry and let him heal me. And he did, little by little, very slowly, and going through this Bible study, I began to heal. And you know, he heals the brokenhearted. He's the one that heals us. And, um, and I knew I was in church every Sunday. I taught Sunday school. I was over, I was our preschool minister, but uh, I would never forgive myself. I knew that Jesus had forgiven me and I knew that it was as far from the East as the West and, uh, but I would not let myself cry. I would not forgive myself. And that's what the study did for me. It helped me open up and begin to forgive myself. Then I needed to forgive my mom and I needed to forgive my husband. And that was something that the Lord took us through also. Um, and I begin to be able to open up and talk to them about it and be able to forgive them. And, um, and like I said, now we've been married uh, 40 years and we still, there's still things that you have to talk about or go through or um, forgive each other for when, about our abortion. It's just, but we do. And the Lord is the one who helps us do those things. Yeah. Um, I, I love care. I be, how I became involved with care was um, one Sunday I was in church and I felt like the Lord was telling me it's time to, because I had, I have five kids. So um, after my kids got grown, I felt like the Lord or, or, you know, out of high school, the Lord was telling me to get involved again. So I went to our pregnancy center here and they gave me the care card and uh and that's when i called you and i think it's so important for women to get help so that they can if they've stuffed everything in in a box they can begin to open up that box and begin to deal with um the things that they've put in there 
So I want to, so you talked about, and I can so relate to all of this because you know, like for me, for my second abortion, I had not acknowledged it at all. And it was completely, it was, for me, it was as if that they had never, ever happened. And it wasn't until I was at my care Bible study, just like the one you went through, that, um, that the Lord kind of resurfaced it and I had to work through it. And I, and I remember just like you said, just like crying harder than I've ever cried before. Like just the, just recognizing what I had done, the severity of it and, and how it had affected me. And, and I, and it, I didn't even realize it was affecting me. And so I want to, I want to talk about that for a minute because I'm thinking for the woman watching or the man for that matter, if it's not affecting you, you don't see it's affecting you and you have it tied up and you secured in your little secret place and no one's bothering it. Why, why go through that pain of untying those, um, those knots and, and opening that box and releasing that wound. Why do you think it's important for the woman that's watching tonight to, 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 to kind of go there and, and deal with her abortion that she's buried probably for, you know, maybe decades? Well, I will say one thing um, that I, the counselor helped me see was when I would have periods of really bad depression or anxiety, it was actually in the month that my baby would have been born, but I never recognized that. I never put two and two together. So a person might be going through some things like I did, like depression and anxiety and not know why. And that was why, that was the exact same time. And I will share one other thing. Um, for a long time, I recognized, I finally recognized that anytime my husband and I were gonna do anything, his classic answer is, I don't care. And it would send me back, I would get very, very angry or upset. And that's why it would, it was because he said to me, I don't care whatever you want to do with the abortion. Well, I wasn't recognizing that, why would I get angry? I mean, he thought he was just saying, I don't care where we go out to eat. You know, I want to do what you want to do. But in my head, I was feeling like, um, you just didn't care. You didn't care back then when you told me whatever I wanted to do, if I wanted an abortion. So it would send me there and I didn't even recognize that. Yeah. You know, with so many of us, you know, I just think it's so, it's, it's so hard because I hear that story all the time and men do not realize the impact of their words. And they, we have this mentality of it's my body, my choice. It's the women's body, the woman's choice. And so the men feel helpless, I think sometimes, and they don't know how to take a stand to protect you and to protect their unborn child. And I love that you share that you, that you struggle with that. But let me just say, and I know you know this, but the fact that you survived your relationship, your marriage has survived abortion for 40 years, that's huge because most couples don't survive abortion. I mean, I'm not with either of the fathers that I chose abortion with. And so it's, I mean, it's, it's a miracle within itself that your marriage has survived abortion and it has thrived. And I love, I just want to kind of go back to, you shared about the sound and the, the BLT. And I remember one day we were talking about that and this was, I don't know, a year or more ago. And just the, the severity of how those little things stick with us. And they don't tell you that when you're about to have an abortion and how the sounds or the smells, or even, you know, for me, I ate Taco Bell after my first abortion. And just the thought, like I, I even to this day, if I go into a Taco Bell, I, I literally am visually and, and mentally back at that Taco Bell in Dallas, Texas that we went to right after my abortion. And, and I can eat Taco Bell now. It's been, you know, a long, long time, but forever, for a long time, it was so hard. It was always, it's always connected. And I mean, people could say Taco Bell, I'd just be like, ugh, you know, but it wasn't because I didn't love the food, you know, cheap 
fast food. It was because it was always related back to my abortion. And I think that so many of us, and so many of us just don't realize those connections until we begin to work through our abortion. And I'm so grateful that God brought you to care because you're such a gift. And I love how you so eloquently speak about the ugliness of abortion. And that kind of sounds wonky and counterproductive, but you just, you have such a grace and passion um, for sharing your story. So thank you for that. As we kind of wrap this up tonight, one last little tidbit, anything you want to share to the woman that's watching or the man or the couple, um, anything you want to share with them um, that maybe they've never told about their abortion, um, their, you know, just whatever, anything you want to kind of close us out with tonight. Okay. Um, one thing when I give my testimony, I always end with is, um, it's not always easy and you know that sometimes it's hard to give your testimony and open yourself up. And I, I don't know about um, you, but me, I guess I always, I don't want anything yucky in my past. I want to be this great, nice, clean person that never did anything wrong. That would be wonderful, but that's not <laughs> life. That's where we're sinful. Um, so if my, I feel like, um, well, number one, Jesus, wants me to give my testimony. That's something he's told me to do. And my testimony is to bring glory to him because right. of what, because I've been healed. I've been healed. And because of my marriage, just all of it. Um, but if my testimony keeps one person from getting an abortion, it was worth it. It was worth it every time I told it. And if it helps one lady to heal or someone to even get to know Jesus or allow him to help them heal or to allow them to forgive themselves. It's so worth it. And I, it's worth it every time. And so my testimony is out there. You may use my testimony. You may use my name. Um, I give everyone permission because I want the word out. It just, it's, it's time that we expose the lie of abortion. It's not a quick fix to a problem, it's going to give you so many more problems. And, and that's, that's how I feel. Do you mind, and in in we are really out of time, and so we got to really wrap this up, but I want to just, for the man out there that maybe he drove his girlfriend or wanted, maybe he said, whatever you want to do, I support you. And, and he lost his child to abortion like Kevin did, your husband. Um, just briefly kind of touched talk to that man out there and maybe how did your husband deal with the abortion because men are so different than women but we know that men hurt from the loss of abortion so do you mind just kind of speaking on behalf of your husband in relation to the loss that you two experienced no i don't mind at all um the the biggest thing is communication to communicate so the biggest thing was for me um, to communicate to him how I was feeling or how that made me feel. And he opened up and was um, very apologetic and um, just wanted me to know that in a way, I think he wished he could do it again. And if he could do it again, it would be very differently. And he saw how the pain and the hurt and we had to work through it a lot. We had to talk about it a lot. It wasn't a one-time fix. Um, so if, if, if there's a man out there, I know it's not always possible for them to speak with that woman or to apologize to her. But, um, but if, it, if, it, if it is your wife, if you are married, I know your wife would want to hear that from you. If not, I know that the Lord um, is the one who would heal you. He's the one that you would need to go to, to, um, to talk about this and to allow him to let you mourn and um, mourn for your child and, and just help you walk through that forgiveness and forgiving yourself. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much. And just, you know, I love, um, I love that we're getting an opportunity to do these. It is out of my comfort zone. I was sharing with Terry, like this is, it's very intimidating to just kind of broadcast all of this out there. 
it's not scripted. We just are real people serving in this abortion recovery ministry, wanting to offer hope and healing because we have received it. We know how valuable it is. And so if you are hurting from abortion, or if you don't even realize you're hurting from abortion, but you know you've had abortion in your past and you've never really dealt with it, please give us a call. Um, you know, we have ongoing classes available. We have several men and women willing to lead you through an amazing Bible study. And it's hard. I mean, it is. It is, it is hard study because we're going to deal and we're going to pull out some of that junk that maybe it's been buried for a long, long time. But it is so powerful. You know, like Terry, I was serving in full-time ministry at a local church here in East Texas, and no one knew my story. And, and I had it hidden really well. But I did not realize the impact that my abortions, I had two abortions, was that it had in my life and in my ministry. And um, I promise you, when you get free from that and you're given the opportunity to, in a safe place, grieve the loss of your child and begin to heal the wound, um, it changes everything. It absolutely changes everything. And so uh, please give us a call, 903 944 7852. We have an amazing program and we don't charge you for it. We do not charge for any of our services. So um, we don't want finances to be an issue. And now because of COVID-19, we've been forced to go digital with so many things. We do meet in person as well, but we're also able to do it virtual. So no matter what state you're in, in fact, no matter what country you're in, we're able to help you. I'm actually leading a woman right now that lives in Canada um, through our abortion recovery program. And so it's, it's just really, really powerful. So give us a call today. Um, God bless you all. And I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday night at 8 p.m.